Welcome back to Pat Bar LSAT Prep. In this video, we present Prep Test 76, Section 1, Questions 20 through 27. This is the fourth passage in the Reading Comprehension section. This passage comprises 64 lines of text and is divided into Passage A and Passage B. The first passage introduces the reader to Karl Popper and the philosophy of science, specifically the power of negative evidence. Passage B gives two examples of how negative evidence came into play in predicting the orbit of Uranus and later of Mercury. As expected, there are related points. As expected, they will be tested. Your summaries will, once again, help you find your way. Your summary of passage A should outline Popper's fundamental point, which basically says, never mind if every swan you've ever seen is white, a single swan of another color would disprove any hypothesis that all swans must be white. Paragraph 1 specifically says that Popper believes the search for negative evidence is at the heart of scientific research. Paragraph 2 introduces auxiliary premises that are almost always required for predictions. When predictions fail, the author says, more than one explanation is possible, concluding that while positive evidence is never conclusive, it's rare when negative evidence is. Your summary of passage B may require a bit more detail, still it must be as brief as possible or you'll take too much time. Hitting the main point here is key. For paragraph 1, astronomers predicted the orbit of Uranus and were wrong, then worked to determine exactly why. They made changes based on what had to be and found Neptune. The second paragraph shows similar methods and results for Mercury, but did not lead to the same finding. Astronomers then used Einstein's theory rather than Newton's to find the answer. If you have yet to read the passage and craft your own summaries, pause the video here and resume when ready. Question 20 wants you to choose the central topic of both passages. This should be easy. Passage B doesn't discuss the logical asymmetry of positive versus negative evidence. Passage A doesn't discuss planetary orbits. Proper technique to confirm a scientific theory? Passage B doesn't discuss technique, while passage A contradicts this entirely. Passage A says experimentation is relevant. That alone eliminates E. Passage A directly discusses negative evidence, while passage B provides examples of its application. C is correct. Question 21 asks directly for something mentioned in passage A that is then illustrated in B. Only two responses are possible here. Repudiating a result is never discussed. Planetary orbits are not mentioned in A. Theories and auxiliary assumptions are illustrated in B. Nothing about experiments. This leaves revising a theory and disproving a theory. So, which is correct? Neither passage mentions revising a theory, specifically if it fails, it's false, or an auxiliary assumption is false. What is applied may be revised, but not the theory. B is incorrect. Since passage A mentions when a theory must be false, and passage B shows replacing a theory with another to make the correct prediction, C is correct. Question 22 wants you to find in passage B that which illustrates a disturbing force as mentioned in A. According to the passage, a disturbing force would disturb a theory's predictions and need to be accounted for to correct them. It can't be Uranus. That was the first of the two planets mentioned for which scientists were trying to predict the orbit, so it cannot disturb itself. It can't be Mercury. That was the second of the two examples. It can't be the sun, and it can't be the moon. Both are known quantities and would have been included in any calculations where appropriate. Passage B specifically mentions that it was the failure of the predicted orbit that led to the discovery of Neptune, which was the disturbing force needed to bring the calculations into alignment. C is correct. 
Question 23 points you to where the author of passage A writes that Popper gives the logical asymmetry hyperbolic application and asks for that which the author is suggesting. Let's eliminate A immediately. The author believes Popper would find a theory scientific only if it can be tested by evidence that might disprove it. Therefore, does not apply, does not apply. The author cannot suggest that Popper underestimates the logical asymmetry for the same reason, stating that Popper finds the search for negative evidence to be at the heart of scientific research, the opposite of an underestimation. Let's drop to E. Since the phrase hyperbolic application means to exaggerate, E is tempting, but incorrect. Though the author writes that Popper's use of logical asymmetry is inadequate with respect to real-world situations faced by scientists, there is nothing about its relevance to any particular theory. If you chose C, you're not alone. You're not correct, either. The one thing you must learn in law school, because you will learn it in court one way or another, is that you must answer the question posed. The author does, in fact, suggest that Popper committed a fallacy, but the fallacy has to do with whether negative evidence is conclusive, not whether the logical asymmetry between positive and negative evidence is exaggerated. C must be incorrect. The author writes in paragraph 1 that Popper found negative evidence of a theory to be tantamount to disproof thereof. Then, in paragraph 2, outlines why that conclusion must go too far, or, in other words, too radical. That's the hyperbolic application, and D is the correct response. Question 24 points you to the final sentence of passage A, and wants you to find which result the author would take from passage B in support of that sentence. As always, Feel free to ignore your summaries when pointed to a particular spot in a passage and just go straight there, where in this case the author claims that negative evidence is rarely conclusive. There are two responses we can eliminate immediately. Did you spot them? Passage B never mentions how Uranus was discovered, only that astronomers were working to predict its orbit. A is incorrect. Never mind that Newton's laws failed to predict Mercury's orbit and led to the application of Einstein's general theory of relativity instead, that application itself is an example of positive evidence. E is incorrect. C cannot be correct, since the failure of Newton's laws to predict Mercury's orbit is an example of negative evidence being conclusive. This contradicts the sentence. Same with D and the failure to find Vulcan. The initial failure of Newton's laws to make a correct prediction led to the application of a new set of auxiliary assumptions, which at the time validated Newton's laws. This means negative evidence was not conclusive and that B is the correct response. Question 25 points you to the rejection of Newton's laws in passage B and wants you to determine which celestial body draws the closest analogy to the hypothetical black swan mentioned in passage A. If your summaries were like ours, you'll recall the black swan would have served as evidence of Y proving X false. So you're looking for the body that proved a theory to be false. There's only one. Mercury's orbit failed predictions and Newton's laws failed to find another planet. Only when Einstein's general theory was applied did the orbit match predictions. A is the correct response. Question 26 wants you to infer which idea from passage A would leave the author of passage B the most skeptical. Let's start with the least likely. Auxiliary assumptions are needed. Passage B agrees with this premise and offers examples. C could not raise skepticism. Logical asymmetry? Can't be. Passage B discusses both positive and negative evidence, but doesn't offer an opinion, skeptical or otherwise, as to whether there is an asymmetry. Scientific research? Skepticism is not something that can be inferred from a passage that discusses the application of theories and assumptions and not the role of scientific research. Passage B does not discuss the philosophy of science, 
so its author would have no reason to be skeptical of Popper's contributions or anyone else's. Positive evidence plays no role? That would be cause for skepticism, since the author of Passage B presents the introduction of Einstein's general theory of relativity as positive evidence to support the correct prediction of Mercury's orbit. B is correct. Question 27 wants a scientific episode to which you would draw the closest analogy to the discovery of Neptune as described in passage B. This is one of those cases where you may abandon your summaries in favor of returning to the passage itself. For example, Newton's laws were proven correct when the auxiliary assumptions were changed, leading to Neptune's discovery exactly where it should have been. In response A, it's made clear that Galileo's theory of tides was incorrect. That's not analogous to the question. Hubble's discovery that Andromeda is a galaxy is presented as settling a debate and not supporting any theory. B is incorrect. C cannot be right, since later evidence supported the extinction theory postulated by Walter Alvarez rather than being required to confirm a theory that didn't work. D presents a discovery and a conclusion by Bernard Breuner. There's neither a theory nor a conflict here. E presents the results of neutron decay as an apparent contradiction of the law of conservation of energy. Wolfgang Pauli postulated a new auxiliary assumption that was later confirmed, and this matches the process that led to the discovery of Neptune. E is correct. Many test takers found this passage and its questions to be particularly difficult. If this was true for you, it may be a good idea to mark this passage in your book, move on, and return at a later date and start from scratch, read the passage, craft your summaries, answer the questions, and then play back this video. This concludes the reading comprehension section of Prep Test 76. In our next video, we will begin our presentation of the first of two logical reasoning sections.